Well, thank you so much for joining me today on Side by Side. We're going to be thinking about Proverbs 3 from verse 21 to 35. That's this section, and I'll focus on one or two areas of that. Proverbs describes wisdom in verse 18 of chapter 3 as a tree of life to those who lay hold of her. And if you think about it, the tree of life is the tree contrasted with the tree that brought death by disobedience in Genesis. At the end of the Revelation, we discover the tree of life is there. And Matthew Henry picks up on this picture and sees it like those who eat from the tree of life are eating life to themselves. It produces that which it goes completely contrasting and contrary to all of the death and all its sin that it brings into our world. And so wisdom is kind of opening up for us and laying out for us a really wonderful pathway of life and vitality. It's like what Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and life in all its fullness. And so we see this wisdom impacting our relationships First of all, there's the relationship with our neighbour who is in need. Do not withhold good from those to whom it is due when it's in your power to do it. And then secondly, there's a neighbour who has got trust with us. Do not plan evil against your neighbour who dwells trustingly beside you. And then thirdly, there's another neighbour, maybe not so helpful. Do not envy a man of violence or choose any of his ways. So you've got three situations described for us here and how we should live in relationship to each one of them. But before I look at them, let me just tell you a story of Thomas. I came across Thomas's story in Trump for the Lord, the sequel to The Hiding Place by Corrie Ten Boom, where she describes Thomas as a tall black man who lived in a round hut with his family in the middle of Africa. He loved the Lord and he loved people, people. But Thomas had a neighbour who was not a Christian and who really despised people who loved God. And that hatred moved him to try to set Thomas's house alight, which was really just made out of straw and very flammable. Three times in a row he tried, and three times Thomas put it out and said nothing, which made his neighbour even more angry. And so one final time his neighbour comes across and succeeds again to set his roof alight. Thomas rushes out and beats the fire, but the sparks blow across the street and set his neighbour's house alight. When Thomas finished putting out the fire, he then realised how badly he was burned, and he had to get treatment for his arms and his hands. Well, his neighbour ended up in prison as a consequence of this. And when Corrie Ten Boom came to do some ministry among this community and this tribe. She met Thomas, and when she prayed with Thomas, Thomas's prayer for this man who was now in prison was this. He said, and I quote, Lord, I claim this neighbour of mine for you. Give him his freedom and do the miracle that in the future he and I will become a team to bring the gospel in our tribe. Well, we'll come back to that in a moment, but let's think about those three neighbours The first one is the neighbour, it says, well, do not withhold good from those whom it is due when it is in your power. Do not say to your neighbour, go and come again. Tomorrow I will give it when you have it with you. This is responding to the the situations that are all around us, doing good for our neighbour. Do you know, sometimes I think when people hear that sort of thing, doing good, they think, oh, that's kind of like all social action. That's not really the gospel work at all. And yet, he who was wisdom personified, the Lord Jesus Christ, is described in what way? As going about doing good. Everything Jesus did was good. And everyone he could do it to, he did it. And he didn't wait for it to happen, you know, some later time. He did it there and then. He ministered to people as and when he met them. And when he was challenging some of those who were critical of him, the religious leaders in Luke 11, you will read it there in verse 42. It says, to them he said, you tithe your mint, rue and every herb, but you neglect justice and the love of God. These you should have done without neglecting the others. 
And so the Lord Jesus is saying, that's what I'm expecting you and I to do, to, to really work hard, to reach out, to be motivated, to do the good you can, and not to put it off to tomorrow. Now, don't send them away and then get them to come back later. This is such a challenge, but it's a challenge and an invitation, isn't it? And then it talks about not doing any harm to our neighbour who trusts us. That's the one who lives alongside us, and we have built up a relationship with them. Don't take advantage of our neighbour's trust. And that, of course, is when they have made themselves in some respect vulnerable to us, building the trust with open-handed kindness, and it's the way how our Lord has lived and acted towards us. We must not take any advantage of them. You can imagine how it could maybe think speaking unkindly of them or about them to others. There are lots of ways in which we could take advantage of our neighbour's trust. And then finally it says about the neighbour who's violent. I don't think, maybe for you and I, it's not the violence of the murderer, the violence of that which we might call the violence of the street, the violence of the night. But it's also gaining something by force, an unkind force, winning at all costs. And we know that the root of this is pride because when James quotes this very verse, he quotes it from the Greek version and it says, God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. That's verse 34 at the end of this chapter. We know how violence is used in the world to achieve the goals of individuals. We saw it just a few days ago in Capitol Hill, where this angry crowd marched upon the state building and five people were left dead. That's what violence does. It's not the way to achieve any good. Aggression is not the right road. And we see it constantly. We see it, not maybe people picking up stones, but using aggressive words, aggressive motivation, aggressive manner, even in their words, and we see it in our own politics here, sadly, sometimes. What is the way we are told to do here? Walk away. Have nothing to do with it. Don't head back. Which makes me come back to Thomas again. Well, when Thomas prayed for his, his neighbour across the street, which was, of course, doing good to his neighbour, because prayer for others is one of the very good things we can do, and it might be the place to begin. Well, Corrie ten Boone had the opportunity a few days later to go to the very prison that Thomas's neighbour was in. And after speaking with the prisoners, she invited them, if there was anyone who would love to come and put their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. The first person to raise their hand was Thomas's neighbour. And after the meeting, she was able to tell him about how Thomas loved him and how he had burned his hands trying to put out the fire to save his house and how he had prayed that they might become a team to spread the gospel. And she says, the big man wept tears, and he nodded his head and he said, that's how it will be. And she said, the next day I said to Thomas, and he praised God and he said, you see, God has worked a miracle. God has worked a miracle. We can never expect too much from him. You know, I don't know what will happen as a consequence of you and I doing good to our neighbour and doing it right now, not putting it off, about living trustingly and building trust with those we live beside and about avoiding the aggressive and violent behaviour like our Lord who always reviled, when reviled did not revile and who didn't turn the word but turned away. When you and I live like that, I think we're going to be living as those people who are eating off the tree of life. We're going to bring life to the people around us. We're going to be people whose lives will add something of real quality to the community among which we live. And people are going to ask questions. They're going to be like Thomas's neighbour. They're going to see the gospel as well as hear it. Let's pray that that will happen for us. Dear Heavenly Father, today help us to go off right now and begin this. Bring to our mind and to our attention the things that we can do and should do and ought to do. Help us not to neglect justice and love and grace just like our Lord Jesus Christ has shown us in his life by his Spirit who now indwells us. And we pray this in his name. Amen. 
As Jesus said, go and do thy likewise.